Hi, I'm back again with a pint of beer and a book review. Today we're going to be talking about The Final Flight by James Blatch. It's been a while since I did my last book review, but this one is a cracker, I promise. Um, I've been reading books quite slowly, I'm afraid to say, just so busy all the time. But this book I really, really enjoyed. It's called The Final Flight by James Blatch. And uh, before I go into the book itself, I just want to talk a little bit about the journey that I took uh, to actually buy this book and start reading it. Because I always think it's really interesting when you actually analyze why you buy a book. So first off, out of preference, I always try and support other self-published authors and indie authors like myself. James Blatch self-published this book. Um, secondly, I'm a huge, huge fan of books about aeroplanes and the Cold War. And so this book is set in the 1960s. It's all about a Vulcan bomber program. Um, and it just ticks all of the boxes for the, the books that I just devoured as a kid, like Goodbye Mickey Mouse by Len Dayton or Piece of Cake um, by Derek Robinson. I just loved these old books about planes. I read so many of them in the 80s. And when I first heard about James's book, I was like, Oh, this is right up my alley. So that was another reason why I was quite keen on getting it. But the deciding factor, and I'm starting to realize this is a deciding factor in a lot of book purchases that I make, is the fact that I know James. I mean, I know of James. I wouldn't say James and I are friends, but we've interacted once or twice. He seems like a fantastic bloke, does a brilliant podcast with Mark Dawson. So I became aware of this book because he sent out an email to people who uh, followed the self-publishing formula uh, group or whatever and said this is his first book why didn't you have a look at it and to me that was like the triumvirate of uh, of things I needed to buy it I was like oh it's self-published so I'm supporting a self-published author it's about something I'm really really into and it's by somebody I know and respect so for me it was an instant buy now full purchase price um, and I do not regret that at all so the final flight is a fictional novel set in Wales and England during the 1960s and it's about a secret program during the Cold War uh, involving Vulcan bombers and it was about being able to teach Vulcan bombers to fly the nap of the earth and avoid radar which back in in the 60s I mean it's still a dangerous today but back in the 60s was incredibly dangerous because Vulcan bombers were jet engine bombers that were kind of slow and clunky because they were bombers but they could fly incredibly fast um, and this book, like a lot of books uh, involving the Cold War and things like that, was a conspiracy book. So there was something afoot. And in the book, the, the protagonists had to figure out what the problem was and then had to make very difficult decisions about how they were going to deal with this. Um, and to me, that's, I think, what made the book so compelling was that there was an, a whole angle of like, do I do the right thing or do I do the thing that I'm supposed to do? Um, where do I stand uh, ethically in what's going on? And that made it really, really interesting. And I think that made the characters in particular stand out in the decisions they made and also the choices they made later on as they discovered more about it. Uh, the book itself was brilliantly written. I, I am absolutely astonished that it is Mar uh, James Blatch's first novel because it's really, really adeptly written. And I, uh, I guess you can say, you know, James Blatch, is, uh, he works with the, one of the masters of self-publishing. But I read this book and it stood out as a uniquely well-written book. Um, James is very concise and a lot of it is dialogue driven and I just whipped through page after page after page when I had my, my bouts of reading it. It's set in the 1960s and it is beautifully, beautifully researched. In fact, one of the emails that I sent to James when I first started reading it was me being a dickhead, as I often am, saying like, oh, well, this particular whiskey that you mentioned here wasn't particularly popular in the 1960s. And he was like, yeah, yeah, someone's already uh, mentioned that. There's another bit, actually, with the Land Rover, where his research really goes... You can tell that James did a ton of research. He was talking about starting the Land Rover and having to wait uh, a few seconds for the engine to heat up, which is interesting, because as far as I believe, and James can, can keep me honest here, 
All of the Land Rovers that were given to the Royal Air Force were petrol ones, you didn't have to heat them up. But I learned to drive in a Land Rover Defender, and I very much remember having to, to crank the key and hold it for like 10 seconds before we could start the car. So these little details are wonderfully, wonderfully researched. Um, and the fact that, you know, there's some, some debate about the, the technicalities is one of the things I enjoy most about historical fiction. But to me, the thing that really stood out beyond everything else is the way James described the behaviour of the characters, not just when they were actually going through the, the, the story part of things, but behind the scenes. The RAF officers um, in the 1960s, they have their wives, they, they live in these houses, they have their, their community and their social structure and stuff like that. Interesting enough, and I think James comes from this background, but my family comes from a sort of Royal Air Force background. My father served in the Royal Air Force, my mother served in the Royal Air Force, my grandfather on my mother's side was a chaplain in the Royal Air Force. So I never really experienced it myself, but we were part of that same like social hierarchy. And so when James writes about the way the characters interact with their wives, the way the characters uh, drink and eat and uh, everything about it was like vividly authentic. And I was really, really impressed by that. Um, the book itself, because the writing is so concise and so dialogue driven, you can read it very fast. Um, but the thing, again, that really, really impressed me about this book is there were certain key scenes, one in particular, I don't want to give too much away, where I read it and I got genuinely excited, genuinely nervous. Like, I could read it and I could feel my heart beating a bit, uh, a bit faster. I was wondering, like, oh my God, what's going to happen to the protagonist? How is this going to play out? This is a crazy situation to be in. And that's the sign of good writing. If you read a book and it makes you feel an emotion, then that's the sign of good writing. So, yeah, all in all, I think it's a terrific book. If you are remotely interested in um, historical fiction, Cold War fiction, airplanes, anything like that, I definitely, definitely recommend buying it. I will say this is James's first book, so perhaps towards the end there are certain decisions that I might have made differently. So, uh, it's not perfect, but it's a lot more perfect than than any of the books I wrote starting out. It's funny, I wrote 11 full-length novels, wrote and self-published 11 full-length novels before I hit my first bestseller. And reading this book, which is James's first book, I'm like, oh, his writing qualities. Probably where I was in like book 14, 15. So yeah, it's an astonishing achievement, James. Well done. But the thing that really excites me is hopefully James is going to continue writing, especially in this genre, because if he does, I'm going to buy every single book he, he writes, because I really, really enjoyed this one. I know that they're just going to get better and better. They're about a subject matter that I'm really passionate and excited about. So um, yeah, I can't recommend this, this book enough. If it sounds like it's your cup of tea, don't hesitate, pick up a copy. Um, I bought it as soon as I could see it on uh, uh, as an ebook, and I'm buying paperback for my dad, and I'm gonna buy a paperback for myself. So I'm a real, real fan of this book. I would say it is the one of the books that I've enjoyed reading the most in years. Uh, anyway, that is about it. Um, yeah, I hope we'll be back with another book review soon. Cheers. I'm Roland Hume. I've sold 67,000 copies of my books. If you want to find out how I did it, I've got the link right here you can click. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you.